Hello guys, in this video we will deep dive into Docker engine. To start with what is a Docker engine? Docker engine is the core software that runs and manages containers. So for example, when we issue a command such as docker run or docker images, these commands are handled by the Docker engine. We will see how Docker engine interprets these commands. Second, Docker engine is modular in design and it is made of many specialized tools. In the later part of the video, you will, we will see what we mean by modular design. And Docker engine is based on OCI, Open Container Initiative. OCI defines a specification templates regarding how containers and images should be. The mission of OCI is to promote a set of common minimal open standards and specifications around the container technology. So tomorrow, if you want to create your own container technology, you have to abide by this OCI. Now that we have a brief introduction to what is a Docker engine, let us look at its let us look at its architecture. This is the old Docker architecture and the Docker architecture has changed over time. This is the first architecture. According to this architecture, Docker engine is a monolithic binary. So this Docker daemon is the whole binary and it contains the code for everything. It contains Docker client, Docker API, container runtimes, image builds and much more. So it is like a one big fat binary which contains everything. And in order to virtualize OS or communicate with the Linux kernel or the host kernel, it uses LXC. LXC provides namespace, control groups and the building blocks for containers that exist in the Linux kernel. Now, the question is why did Docker, Docker stop using this technology or this architecture? What are the disadvantages of this architecture? So first of all, LXC is Linux specific and it does not support multiple architectures. And Docker wanted to support multiple architectures. So using LXC does not make sense. Not only LXC is Linux specific, LXC is a third party tool. And Docker did not want to depend on some external tools that are so core to the project because it holds a high risk and since the docker engine is a big fat binary it was so hard to innovate because of its monolithic design and it was also slower and it was it was slower because it's so big that it takes so much of your ram and the physical storage so it was not a good design so docker had to had to create a new architecture to address these issues and it should be smaller in size and it should be faster and it should handle the LXE also so docker has to create its own LXE and docker came up with this this new docker architecture has five main components first one first one being the docker client docker client sends the request to the docker team it is a cli component so whenever we type something as docker run or docker images this is the docker client that we are using we send this request to the docker daemon docker daemon exposes the apis and listens to the api it also does image management image builds authentication security orchestration and many more then comes the Docker D. The job of the Docker D is to manage the container's lifecycle. Container T is responsible for start, stop, pause, remove, and the whole lifecycle of the container. Container D can also pull and push the images, but the primary objective of container d is to manage or manage or supervise the containers the shim 
Dashim is responsible for managing the streams and communicating with container D or Docker daemon regarding the status of the container. So the input stream and output streams these are managed by the same shim and it reports the container status to the daemon. The run C is the last component. Run C creates the container. That's it. The only job of run C is to create the container. Run C reads the OCI implementations and create the containers accordingly. Run C uses lib container to create the containers. Lib container is created by Docker to replace the LXC. Now that we know what is uh, the Docker new architecture, we should know what happens when we run a command such as docker run or docker build. So how does docker engine uses this command or how does the docker engine interprets this command? Let us see it. So when we issue a command called as docker container run, the docker API that is exposed by the docker daemon receives this command. So by, with the, the docker client we send a command docker container run and the docker daemon gets this request. Then it interprets that we want to create a new container. So it gives hand, uh, th then it transfer our uh, request to container D. Container D receives the instruction and it knows that we have to create a container. So to create a container, it sends the request to run C. So it build and start the container. Run C exits after the container is started and gives back control to the shim. So now shim is manages the stream for the container and if there is any change with the container, it lets container D or docker daemon know. So this is how the docker engine works. When you just put a simple command, so docker run, docker container run, this is how it interprets the command. It is very useful to know how it works because then only we can uh, further innovate or use docker engine according to our need. These are the available docker binaries which you can download. The docker daemon is called as docker d. Container d is docker hyphen container d. You can download all these binaries and use according to your. And that's it. If you have any more doubts, write it down in the comment section and I will respond to you as soon as possible. And don't forget to subscribe uh, and thank you and have a nice day. Bye.